viewers hope you're well once again i'm so honored to share what the lord has placed on my heart with you my names are erica mukisa aka mama maisha or mama zion i'm so excited to share what uh, what i have been carrying on my heart you know um i wrote about the new world order in one of my books erica part 2 18 years with lucifer and when I was writing this book, it, it seemed not to make sense to very many people. They thought maybe uh, my testimony was just a story I was just cooking up. But now people are beginning to realize that, hey, life is spiritual, Saturn exists, and there is what they call the new world order. So parents and uh, saints, and even if you're not born again, I just want you to be aware that what the, the system is cooking and what they have been cooking for a long time is called the New World Order. They want a one government, one world religion, and they want everyone to have a chip, everyone to have a mark of the beast. And no one will be able to buy or sell without that mark. And it's very possible someone will ask how possible is it okay if they managed to shut down the whole economic system because of one virus called COVID-19 and they managed to force everybody to wear a mask and majority of the people to get vaccinated how easy will it be for them to force the whole world to get the mask because recently sometime back in Uganda um, people's lines were shut because they did not have a national ID and the next day everyone was lining up to get a national ID they had refused but the, the, all they needed to do was to shut down their communication uh, network and everybody was lining up just because they were disconnected from their phones they could not communicate so now what about a situation where you cannot be able to access food, to, to use the road, to access medical facilities, to enter malls and shop, to go to marketplaces if you do not have the mark. How many people are going to compromise? Just imagine. In Kenya, it was the Huduma number. And they put policies to oppress people who do not have the Huduma number. And the next day, people were lining up to get the Huduma number. And before they knew, majority of the people had the Huduma number. And all the things they do is to test the weather, to test the ground, to see if it is possible to force everyone to get the mark. Eventually, they are going to force people to get the mark. And as a Christian, are you ready to stand? Well, there are some Christians, brothers in Christ and sisters in Christ, who come before the Father because they have something that they want. They want to be prophesied for. They want to be prayed for. They just want shortcuts in life. And they are not ready to endure the hard, the hard times, the hard moments. They don't want to go through the long process. So it will be difficult for such believers to stand anyway. Because even in church, if they don't get what they want from one prophet, they move to another prophet. If they don't get what they want from one pastor, they'll go to another pastor. They have moved from church to church. Some Christians have gone to, to over 50 churches looking for anointing, looking for prophets to prophesy over their lives, looking for miracles, miracle money, miracle baby, miracle man, miracle husband, miracle visa, miracle everything. They want miracles. They don't want to work. They don't want to go through the process of training. You know, God had to take us through that process with my husband. He had to take us away from all our friends, the resources, the money that we were holding on, from everything that uh, was our source. He took it away for some good time, some good years. And we had to go through the process. We had to go through it. Every Christian has to go through that process. But majority of the Christians don't want to go through the process. And now what is happening is, they are organizing the one world religion where the Christians, the Catholics, the Buddhists, 
all religions will come together and worship one God. Really, that is not the God that we serve. You cannot mix our God with other gods. Our God is not the same God as Allah, because Allah does not have a son. Our God is not the same as the gods that are worshipped by the Buddhists. Really, how can you bring all these people who have different beliefs and join them together as one? It's impossible. It's really impossible. But they are going to force it. And as I speak now, a lot has been done, as you see in the videos that I'm, I'm showing you. Uh, in the videos that I'm going to show you, a lot has been put in place. The Muslims have come together with the Catholics and the Buddhists and uh, the, the so-called uh, uh, TV preachers. Some TV preachers have, have, have bowed to the system. And that is what you see as uh, the interreligious council. So is your pastor part of the interreligious council? More steps towards the One World Religion have just taken place on September 14th and 15th, 2022, with Catholicism and Islam pretty much coming together and say, yeah, we worship the same God and we're brothers and sisters, just different paths to a different God. This is all falling under the umbrella of the uniting of the Abrahamic religions, Judaism, Islam, and Christianity, of course, but not the real Christianity, it's Catholicism that's being united under this one world religion. The big event that took place on September 14th and 15th was at the 7th Congress of Leaders of World and Traditional Religions, and it concluded on last Thursday. But before I get into that, I'll briefly just touch on and remind people of the Abrahamic family house being built in Abu Dhabi, where there's religious, it's a religious center, for Catholics, Muslims, and Jews to all come together and worship all through the Abrahamic religions there at this one thing. The reason this is important is because 2 Thessalonians 2.4 tells us that the Antichrist will demand the worship of himself and his image from everybody. And anyone who doesn't worship him, these people will die, actually. They will become martyrs because the only people who won't worship him will be true believers in Jesus Christ, which is not mentioned by Pope Francis at any of these big meetings. So let me read a little bit from this article about it. The world religion's leaders today adopted the human fraternity document signed by His Eminence, the Grand Imam of Al-Azhar and Chairman of the Muslim Council of Elders, Dr. Ahmed al Taib and His Holiness, Pope Francis, their name, not mine, of the Catholic Church in Abu Dhabi in 2019. And this came during the 7th Congress of Leaders of World and Traditional Religions, which concluded on Thursday. Some highlights from the World Congress of Religions. We note that pluralism in terms of differences in skin color, gender, race, language, and culture are expressions of the wisdom of God in creation. Religious diversity is permitted by God and therefore any coercion to a particular religion and religious doctrine is unacceptable. So, as you can tell, they're not saying here at these at these events that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, the Messiah, the only way to heaven, because that would contradict Islam and Judaism. So it's, it's uniting, everybody's giving up the truth here. They're all just coming together to get along, to give up the truth, which is that salvation is found through Jesus Christ alone. Back to the article, it says, We recognize the importance and value of the document of human fraternity for world peace and living together between the Holy See and Al-Azhar al-Sharif. And then they mention two different documents that were resolved and signed into place by the UN General Assembly, as well as the Makkah Declaration adopted in Mecca in 2019. And these call for peace, dialogue, mutual understanding, and mutual respect among believers. So it's really the uniting of all these religions under the fact that we need to coexist together. And yes, of course, we need to coexist together. But the problem here is that they're starting to aim it towards we serve the same God. We worship the same God. You know, these Abrahamic religions are just different expressions of God to different people. And that's an absolute lie. The Jewish people are stuck in the old covenant, not accepting the new covenant. Islam is clearly, the Quran was written 600 years after the Bible, and they're clearly ripped off stories Muhammad ripped off and manipulated to create his own religion in the same region from the same stories. I mean, Muhammad even demanded that the original manuscripts for the Quran be destroyed. Why would he demand that? Because 
to cover it up, obviously. So the one truth is found within the biblical text alone, within the old and the new covenant mixed together, the new covenant salvation through Jesus Christ alone. So really it was this document of human fraternity. It was signed by the Pope and this grand Imam and adopted at the seventh Congress of leaders of the world in traditional religions in Kazakhstan. It's the uniting of the world under a one world religion that the Antichrist will be the head of eventually. A glimpse of the seventh Congress of leaders of world and traditional religion. Here's from Vatican news and I was reading through this article and noticed something interesting that Congress, the seventh Congress of leaders of world and traditional religion came to life in 2003 in the wake of the tragic September 11th attacks of the United States and following Pope John Paul II's second spirit of Assisi meeting in 2002. So here's just another thing that came out of the September 11th attacks. Pretty interesting to note that. Worth noting about this interfaith meeting is that it took place within a pyramid. Kind of strange that that's their building of choice. Also, Pope Francis said that his goal for this meeting was peace and unity, of course. Very similar to what we know in 1 Thessalonians 5.3, peace and security is what they'll be saying and then sudden destruction comes on them like labor pains on a pregnant woman and they will not escape and that's the whole point really of this whole meeting really and this whole uniting of these religions together not that we shouldn't get along and not that we should be out killing each other or something but the fact that we're there trying to unite under unite everybody under peace and security that's exactly what the bible says they'll be doing because it's dropping the truth that Jesus Christ is the way to salvation, which is the true love and peace that people need to come to realize, and just accepting everybody's false doctrines and false teachings for peace and safety, and that will cause sudden destruction. Pope Francis also said at this meeting that the best way to stop religious extremism is not through following the teachings of Jesus Christ, but actually through political democracy. So just enforcing the fact that what the Antichrist will have, which will be the one world government, one world religion. And again, Pope Francis does not mention the truth that salvation is found through Jesus Christ alone, but in fact says this, and this is from Vatican News on the article called Pope in Kazakhstan Religions Key to Building World Peace and Understanding in reference to this meeting that took place. It says, in his speech to the Congress, the Pope began by addressing everyone as brothers and sisters in the name of the fraternity that unites us as children of the same heaven. He noted that before the mystery of the infinite that transcends and attracts us, the religions remind us that we are creatures, not omnipotent, journeying towards the same heavenly goal. I mean, out of his own mouth. I mean, the fact that people who are Catholics don't see that this guy's pushing for one world religion is insane. I mean, it's absolutely clear as day that this is what he's pushing for. Saying we're all going to the same heavenly goal? The, that Muslims who actually have written on the Dome of the Rock building in there in Jerusalem actually says God has no son. And so they want to unite Catholicism with people who say God has no son because it's clearly written clear as day in the Bible that you have to acknowledge Jesus as the son of God in order to find salvation through him. Is your pastor part of the interreligious council? As he bowed to the system, who are you following? Are you following Christ or are you following a man of God? Many Christians have uh, placed the image of man in the place where God is supposed to be. They worship man more than God. So everything the man of God or the woman of God says is 100% okay, even if it, it, does not line, it does not line up with the word of God. They don't want to read the Bible. The pastors have to read for them. And whatever the man of God says is, is the word from God, regardless of how contradicting it is. So I just want to encourage you to wake up and know the times that we are in. Prepare to die for the gospel. Prepare to die for Christ. Anyway, even if you do not die immediately when they are killing saints, at some point still you will die. So everybody is supposed to die at some point. So what is that that you're holding on to? What is that that cannot allow you to worship your God freely? When they go to the prayer centers, they are going with a shopping list. They go with a list of items that they want from God. They do not go to seek God. They go to ask God to give them whatever they need. And when they get whatever they need, they get the marriage, they get the children, they get uh, the cars, they get the houses. 
they will not come back to pray. They are materialistic Christians. If a pastor preaches about spiritual matters, like the things I'm talking about to so many Christians, they are boring. So they will not even watch. This video uh, is limited because I am not prophesying what they want to hear. I am not telling them that they will build uh, mansions and they will drive cars and, and uh, they will have babies and twins and triplets. I'm not saying that. So they will find this, this gospel boring because they want something that is attractive to their itchy ears. Anything that is not enticing, anything that uh, is not adding money into their account, they will not like. So those are the Christians that are going to bow to the system. Because if they tell you without the mark we are freezing your account, they will not accept. They will not allow. So they will compromise. Now I just want to encourage you to be prepared for what is coming. And also not to fear. Because greater is he that is in us than the devil that is in the world. We are not afraid of what he can do. He roars like a lion looking for whom to devour. But our God is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He roars, he's a real lion, and the enemy is afraid of him. He says, the Bible says that at the mention of his name, every knee bows and every tongue confesses that Jesus is Lord. So we are not afraid of the system. We are not afraid of the Pope. He can do whatever he wants. Recently, he even acknowledged the, the Antichrist as I'm going to show you in the video, he acknowledged the Antichrist to be the father of Jesus. Can you imagine what a blasphemous human being this one is? Great pomp, fanfare, and ceremony. Pope Francis, the head of the Jesuit order, announced through his cantor the eminent emergence, the near advent of the coming to light of the Antichrist. Christus filius tuus, qui regressus ab inferis, cum mano generis erenus iluxit, et te condivit et regnat in secula seculorum. During this pronouncement, the cantor called Lucifer God, claiming Lucifer to be the father of Jesus Christ. The cantor acknowledged Lucifer as the Antichrist himself and worshipped him. To this a great crowd and the whole world sang This was the 3D ceremony that the Pope wanted to be seen worldwide. The announcement to the world, the son of perdition, this way comes. <laughs> You know, but we are not afraid of the Pope. He can do whatever he wants. He can even pull the sun down. We are not afraid. We know who we are in Christ. We know that greater is he that is in us than the devil that is in the world. They can even walk on water if they want. They can do whatever they feel like doing. We are not intimidated. We are standing, and I know that there are so many Christians out there that are not going to be compromised. We are going to stand to the end. May God bless you. 
don't forget to subscribe like share and comment because i always look forward to hearing from you and if the lord has done you well and you feel like sharing on this platform just comment or send us a message on our whatsapp the numbers on the screen and if you feel like blessing us uh, the message and the information is in the description box i love you so much you can follow me on my facebook erica mukisa's testimonies i'll be uploading these same videos on my facebook uh, page i love you so much may god bless you mama maisha aka mami zion erica part two 18 years with lucifer The continuation of the testimonial about a sorcerer who served Lucifer for 18 years and lived to tell her story.